Hi booktube! I'm here today with a review video, um, a review of a book, um, and the book is called The Sheep Look Up by John Brunner. It was written in 1972, published in 1972 anyways, um, and this is just going to be kind of like an off the top of my head type review. I do have some notes on my phone. Um, I like to take notes while I'm reading about things to kind of talk about and things that really kind of struck me. Um, so I'm going to be looking down at my phone because I don't have an actual script written out like I usually do for reviews. I just really wanted to get this out there um, and so this is the way I'm doing it. Sorry if it's a bit rambly or a bit choppy or whatever, but let's get to it. Um, so first, just a basic summary, of course. Um, this is a... I believe it's categorized as science fiction horror, um, but the horror element isn't like a murderer type horror, kind of, you know, bad guy, evil spirits type things. It's more of like a end of the earth, everyone's dying in horrific ways kind of horror. <laughs> um, and so it takes place in the, I think it would be 2076 or around there. <laughs> um, and it's about how the, uh, specifically it takes place in the United States, there are other places mentioned, but specifically in the United States, how the environment and um, corporations have been allowed to destroy it to such a degree. Um, and we're not only just talking um, about the, the environment, but also the people in it um, and how that, that affects them. So for example, all the burying of um, nuclear waste, of different oils and stuff. Um, how uh, fracking causes earthquakes and all that, um, transportation, pollution, sorry, transportation, pollution, um, the antibiotics in, um, in foods, uh, rampant diseases, um, and uh, really a, a lot about the disparity, disparity between the rich and the poor and how um, there's these diseases that are rampant among, the, among those who are poor as opposed to those who are rich who are able to afford better food and can surround themselves with fresh water and stuff so like everything's gone to pot you can't even drink water out of the tap um even like the the if you think of like um I think it's called whole foods in the states that kind of like more expensive organic stuff even that store it's called puritan in the in the novel is kind of corrupt and they actually do use uh, chemical compounds and stuff like that so everything is basically destroyed the environment everything's gone blah, 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 and um horrific things happen and this guy um comes up his name's austin train and he's like listen guys like this has got to stop we got to do something um and before he can really get into it the government's like you are bad you are wanted and he disappears um, but then these trainites uh, come up, and there's like two uh, different sects. Um, so there's one that they're kind of like peaceful. They live in um, kind of like commune places where they grow their own food, and they um, try to stay away from chemicals and, and other things that cause pollution. Um, and then there's like the violent um, group who like bombs things and pits skulls and crossbones and everything and that kind of stuff. Um, that's... <laughs> There's a lot more to it, but that's just um, all I'll give you because otherwise this whole video will just be a plot summary and I don't want that. Um, I also want to talk about the structure, um, which is um, something that I really, really, really enjoyed about this book and something that really pitted over the edge as one of my all-time favorite new books um, that I've ever read. It's amazing. So the, the book is break, broken up into uh, 12 chapters, so it's you go through the year from... I believe it's from November to December, um, and each month begins with a poem. And he actually had me convinced that these poems were real because they're all in different styles from different time periods and stuff like that, and they're really well done. And I had to look it up multiple times. I'm like, he's not listing the author. Who's the author of these poems? And it turns out it's him himself. Um, so he's written all these different styles of poems. Like there's um, Whitman um, kind of free verse. There's um, kind of um, like a Chaucer-like poem, um, some Shakespeare-type stuff, all different, you know, there's some postmodern um, stuff thrown in there, like it's very, um, quite interesting and, and captivating. Each time you get to the new chapter, I was looking forward to reading the poem. Um, and then he also breaks up parts, um, like there's the, the narrative, and then he'll add um, 
bits and pieces from the media so like a radio transcript or a TV transcript or an advertisement something along those lines that other um, that um, adds rather to the to the story um, so it explains it in a way that's not like a whole page of um, exposition it's you know just a, a chunk of stuff that oh you know that connects to that okay I, I know what happened um, let's see what else I have here um, he has bits of uh, memos and news, um, news bits, transcripts. It's really quite interesting how it's done. Um, I read an ebook and a um, a rather bad ebook version of it. Um, I think there would have been pictures at some points because there are blank spaces um, that look like there would have been pictures. I really want to get my hand on a physical copy of this book because it's one of my all-time favorites now, as I say. Um, and they all add context and depth to the stories of the characters. Yeah, um, there's also parts where um, he goes rather rapidly through things, um, where he mixes in exposition, dialogue, media, transcripts, news, memos, death notices, and all this stuff, kind of like in one subchapter it's just like boom 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 and I I really like that because it was kind of like a, a montage in writing of, of sorts it was kind of like let's get this all this exposition out of the way that you kind of need to know um, but without taking up you know a hundred or more pages type thing um, so I really really liked the way that was done um, let's see um, there's a large cast of characters um, and all of them are quite, um, play their, play their part. Um, and I posted some pictures to Instagram saying, like, I can't believe this book was written, um, 40 odd years ago, almost 45 years ago, oh my gosh, um, because it's the, the, the issues that he addressed and the, the casual way in which he addresses certain things seems very relevant to today. Like, there's some characters who, um, um, on the, are on the sexual spectrum spectrum and stuff like that but it's not um really in your face it's just kind of that's just what these two characters are like you know um kind of thing I really liked I really think that this book was an example of show not tell um they tell writers that all the time show show what's happening as opposed to just telling what's happening um so he doesn't come out and say these characters are gay he says these characters um you know, they put their hands around each other or something like that, around his waist or something. Something very, like, off the cuff, kind of like that. Um, it's, as I said, categorized as a horror science fiction. That kind of surprised me at first. I guess I had these preconceptions of horror as being about, like, murderers or, like, ghosts or something scary like that. Um, but what really got me was that, um... There's a lot of graphic detail in the book, and that's what's horrifying. Um, so, you know, it's the, the the kind of like the the humans are are kind of like monsters who've destroyed the earth, and now like the earth's retaliating. Like the earth is the is the villain, is the is the is the bad guy, is the, is the murderer, is the is the ghost that's coming after you type thing. Um, so I thought that was really quite an interesting subversion, I guess, of the horror genre. Um, yeah, um, let's see. Oh, when I was reading this, um, I kept calling back to um, Oryx and Crake, The Year of the Flood, and Mad Adam, all um, part of a series by um, Margaret Atwood, and I know, I know I, I trash on her all the time. Um, um, but those books are kind of like about environment, and I hear people say all the time, oh, this will really spur you into caring about the environment. But it, I found with those books, it was more, I was more interested in the characters um, than what had happened to the environment that caused them to be that way. Um, and I didn't feel like it was as urgent. Um, whereas with this, I really felt a sense of urgency, like, um, like realizing that, you know, what I'm eating can affect my children and their health in the future type thing like it was this kind of like it really makes you change the way like it makes you realize that those things that people are saying like climate change and and all this stuff is is real and it's been thought about for 45 50 years and we're still not doing anything about it and this book kind of pits out in very realistic forms 
what can happen if we keep neglecting the environment. Um, and it's an urgent call to action, and it says, you know, do something, please, save me, <laughs> um, you know, save yourself, save your future type thing. Um, so yes, that's um, The Sheep Look Up by John Brunner, and tell me if you've read this book or any other book that has to do with the environment. I'm really now really interested to seek out more um, along those lines, and remember to keep on reading.